everybody, you may have a smart TV and be thinking that you need an extra gadget in order to make it truly accessible, like an Apple TV, for instance, or a Google Chromecast. I have great news for you. You may actually have accessibility features built right into your TV and not even realize it. That's exactly what happened to me. I'll show you coming right up. Hey everybody, it's Tammy, your friendly neighborhood blind mouse who likes to babble about technology. And this week's tech video, I wanted to show you a hidden feature of your smart TV. If you have one that you may not realize is there, I stumbled upon this just uh, after I got my smart TV about a year ago and I thought I would play around with it. So I have a Samsung TV, I forget the exact model number, I think it's UN, UNJ something or other, but um, I was playing around with it and discovered there are actually accessibility options in the menu. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I realize not all vision impaired people are into TV, some more than others, but if you do have a smart TV um, and you don't have uh, an extra box like an Apple TV or a Google uh, Chromecast or whatnot, you may want to play around with your settings. If you can't uh, see your settings, get a sighted person to help you out. So I'm just going to launch my settings now. So as you can hear, I have my TV talking to me. So what I did is I, st I went into the system settings. There we go. And the very first option is accessibility. So you just click to go in there. Now, for those of you with partial vision, you'll notice that some of these settings are grayed out and that's because I have a PVR and so my TV doesn't control my channels and whatnot. So because of that, some of these settings are grayed out, but I will go through uh, what's on the menus here. So the first one, whoops, I did not want to go in there. Okay. One moment. Where am I now? Okay. Take two. Let me go back into the menu again. Oops, it helps if I aim my remote at the TV and not the floor. Okay, so the first one is the voice guy, which is the one that most of us um, are going to be interested in as visually impaired people. So if you go into that, basically you can just have on or off. So that one's pretty explanatory, self-explanatory. Then you can have low volume, high volume. I'll just quickly go in. So you've got your various volumes there. And so I'm talking through the uh, menu. Next setting we have is pitch. So I'll just let you hear those. So I'll put it to low just so you can hear the difference. Now change it to medium. So I don't know about you, the, I, to me the difference is negligible. It's, it's very subtle. That's probably the biggest difference. And that's where I prefer it, so I'll just leave it on that. Now we got it on speed. So there's five different speeds on my particular model here, so we'll just show you here. Sorry, so that was very fast is what she said, and we've got fast. So I'll show you very slow. Very okay, enough of that. <laughs> very fast. Now I'll show you very fast. I'll show you normal. Oh my god, that's still too slow for my book, so 
No, oh, that's a little too fast. So I like it on fast, so we'll leave it on that. And that's pretty much it for the voice guide. So I just leave the voice on, I set it to fast, and I go on my merry way. Now it does have video description, but because again, I have mine going through my PVR, I'm not able to use that. But if you have uh, whatever you're watching going directly through your TV or your, your pardon me, you have, if you have your TV controlling your devices rather than your uh, PVR controlling your channels and whatnot, you should be able to use that feature, I do believe. There's closed captions if you have somebody who's hearing impaired in the family or somebody who speaks English as a second language, maybe they need captions or maybe you're watching a movie with captions uh, for whatever reason, uh, there is that. But again, because of the PVR, mine is disabled. Now I'm not sure why this is disabled. Let me just try something here. Okay, so I'm not sure why that's disabled, but for whatever reason, the transparency doesn't work. So high contrast is just like it sounds. So I'll show you how it looks with and without high contrast. So right now I have it on. So you'll notice when the when I bring the menu up, the, the item that's selected, to me that looks like black background with a white text and um, when it's not selected, it's a white background with uh, black text. Now, if I turn it off, as you can see now, it's no longer black uh, background with white text for the selected item. It's uh, kind of like, looks like a light blue to me with a white text. Um, and then the other one looks the same as it did before. So I'm gonna change that back to on. There we go, so we got that back on. Now this one is weird. You think this one would be like making it big, but when I turn this off, for some reason it makes it look really dim, and I'll show you what I mean. So I don't know what they're talking, is it larger? Let me try to turn it back on here one second. Okay, looking very closely at my screen. Oh, okay. Jeez, you'd think I was blind or something. Okay, so it is bigger, so it is enlarged. My suggestion is uh, if, you, if your TV has the enlarge option, leave it on. That way you can actually see what the heck it is you're looking at. And then lastly, there's a re learn remote control option. And I believe that gives you like a little tutorial. Uh, this is for people who have trouble seeing the remote. Um, which I do, but I often have my magnifying glass sitting right here, so I often just uh, look at it. But let me just uh, go in here real quick. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, basically you can uh, press buttons and it will say what it is. So let's try it out. Channel up. Channel down. Five. Oh, cool. Uh, what's this button? Stop. Record. Enter. Menu. So that's kind of cool. So kudos to Samsung for building this into their uh, TVs. And I'm sure they're not the only ones who are doing this as, you know, more and more uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, you know, especially with smartphones are building this in and everybody's kind of using their TV with their smartphone now. And a lot of people are ditching their cable and using their TVs with their smartphones and their tablets and streaming content to their TV. So it's really cool that they have built this in, but um, the, I didn't buy this TV for this feature. I bought it because I needed a bigger TV and my old P TV was a piece of crap and I could barely see. Whoops, I'm dropping my recorder on the floor. Hopefully everybody can still, yeah, it's still recording. Sorry about that. All right. So, but uh, yeah, I didn't, re I didn't buy this TV for this the accessible ability feature. It's just something I luckily stumbled upon. But yeah, I, I decided, I'm like, you know what? I wish I could 
I can't read my TV at all from my couch, so I thought, well, let me just go and see what's uh, what's uh, you know what's what with the menus, and I just stumbled upon it. So um, if I didn't know uh, that my TV had this, I bet you there's a lot of you out there who probably have this built into your TV at home and don't even realize it. So uh, check it out now. Uh, let me just get out of the screen for real quick here. Let's press exit. And I just want to show you what how I use it. Exit. Exit. Uh oh, how did it say to exit? <laughs> oh no, one moment. Exit. Exit. Yes. Exit. Okay, how do I get out of here? Help. Enter. Oh good lord. Blue. No, let me out of here. Exit. Oh. Ah, oh, phew! Yay! Okay, I guess I needed to press exit like 8,000 times. Okay, so what I want to show you, and this is how I use it, is um, I have a number of gadgets attached to my TV, and um, when I bring up my list of gadgets at the top, uh, there's a few spots I have memorized, but every now and then I'm like, okay, which one, what is it, which one am I on? So what I do is they, they Best Buy, they labeled uh, all the gadgets for me. So now when I have the voiceover on, on my TV, it will actually read out what device or what input I'm on. So I'll just show you here. And that's because I don't have a device attached to that last one, so... So that can make your life a little bit easier, um, you know, if you have a smart TV, even if you don't need most of the features. This is how why I use the voiceover is just so um, I know which uh, which device or which um, input I'm on when I'm flipping between my various device, whether it be my Apple TV or the TV or DVD player, what have you. If you have a smart TV, I would love to know whether or not your TV has these features built in or something similar, especially if yours is not a Samsung. If you have a Samsung, I'm sure you probably have something similar built into yours, uh, even if it's a different model. But if you uh, have something else like a Sony or a Toshiba or Vizio or whatever uh, your model happens to be, uh, check out your settings and let me know in the comments below whether or not you have similar features and uh, whether or not you find them useful. Now, one problem I have noticed is when I go into the Samsung Smart Hub, which is their uh, smart uh, content, smart TV content control area, that the voiceover doesn't work for a lot of the, um, the parts of it. And I think, I believe that's an issue with the, the, the apps that are built into, into it because there are third party apps. I'm just trying to find, see if I can turn on Smart Hub. So it, it will read, the, I believe it will read the e-manual to you. Um, okay, I don't want this on my screen. Okay. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. Shut up. <laughs> oh. Okay, sure. I don't know what I'm consenting to, but sure, whatever. <laughs> okay, now my smart hub has disappeared. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's go into Netflix. It's real quick. Or not so here's a perfect example right it doesn't want to talk to me on this one so that's really annoying if they're gonna have they should make accessibility mandatory in the apps so this is a perfect example of how the smart hub could be improved to me as someone with a disability if you're gonna have an accessibility component to your TV make everything accessible why are they not making Netflix or whoever else has an app on here, why is it not mandatory that they build accessibility into their apps? Um, 
that just that just kind of boggles my mind. So I, I'm going to end here now and go and stand in front of my TV to read what the heck it is they want me to agree to or disagree to on here. I'm sure they probably changed some sort of terms and conditions. I think Netflix is changing their prices again or something. So anyhow, but this is not a video about Netflix, so I will shut up about that. But that's basically it. Just wanted to show you that this is uh, available in uh, at least Samsung smart TV. So check out your TV. You might have this available. It might help you out a little bit when you're navigating the menus. And be sure to let me know whether or not your TV has something similar if you happen to have a smart TV yourself. Thanks for watching and I will talk to you in the next video. Here at Circle of the Blind Mice are bringing these videos because I believe technology enriches the lives of those of us with visual impairments. My mission is to help you learn tech, use tech, and embrace tech. Please share this video to help spread the word to your fellow blind mice. And if you're new here, please subscribe for new videos every Saturday. Thanks for watching.